welcome children today we are going to discuss second part of grade 6 geography lesson number 1 maps and diagrams students in our previous video we have already discussed about meaning of maps types of maps importance advantages and disadvantages of maps difference between maps and globes and advantages and disadvantages of globes so students let's discuss the remaining part of your chapter difference between maps and sketches a map is drawn to scale while sketch is a rough drawing a map of smaller or bigger space can be drawn on a piece of paper while we draw a sketch of only small area a map has much more accuracy than a sketch a map gives much more details of a place while sketch cannot in simple words we can say that while a map is an accurate representation of an area a sketch is a rough representation of an area drawn only to give a general sense of some features of the area difference between maps and plans a plan is a drawing that shows the horizontal section of a small area or a building a map and a plan are very similar but there are some differences between maps and plans we can study a part or whole of the earth with the help of a map but a plan is a detail of drawing of small areas a map contains lot of information while in plan details are given in the form of symbols a map shows only the very important features of the area but a plan can show the length and the breadth in simple words we can say that while a plan shows a school or a part of neighborhood a map shows the whole city district or state aerial photographs and satellite pictures another tool for representing the earth or a part of it is aerial photography in fact such photographs have been used widely in the preparation of accurate maps representation of geographical features through diagrams we use diagrams to represent different geographical features such as anticlines and synclines anticlines are folds in which each half of the fold dips away from the crest synclines are folds in which each half of the fold dips towards the trough of the fold you can remember the difference by nothing that anticlines form an A shape and synclines form the bottom of an N anticlines and synclines are parts of a simple fold so students let's see how a fold is formed well a fold is formed when the layers of the earth's crust are folded by compression well students with the help of a diagram of a block mountain we can also represent the different relief features of our earth well let us discuss how the block mountains are formed Block mountains are formed when cracks or faults occur in the earth's crust and the land between the cracks sinks, leaving upstanding blocks on either side. Block mountains are also known as fault block mountains. You can make your own fault block mountains using a long eraser. Take a long eraser and use a pencil to draw fault lines on it. Use a cutter or blade to cut the eraser across the lines drawn earlier. Place the pieces of the long eraser together to make the eraser whole again. Apply a little pressure on the corner pieces and lift the whole eraser above the table. Slowly put the corner pieces apart and you can see how the land in the middle of fault lines subsides and block mountains are formed on either side. The edges of such mountains are steep and the surfaces are almost level. 
An example of block mountains is the Vosges in Europe. The marble rocks at Jabalpur are an example of block mountains found in India. Students, let us discuss about different stages or parts of a river. Sources of a river Just like water poured on a tilted tray flows from the higher end of the tray to the lower end, water flows from higher land to low land. Water flowing from high land to low land over a long distance is called a river. The route through which a river travels is called the course of the river. The place where a river begins its journey is called its source. The source of some rivers is in the snow mountains. When the snow melts in summer, the water flows down the mountains in small streams. These streams join to form rivers. Such rivers are called snow-fed rivers. What is the difference between a stream and a river? Well, some rivers depend on the rains of water. Heavy rains in the mountains, hills and plateaus form streams which join to form rivers. Such rivers are called rain-fed rivers. They do not have a single source but start from a particular area. Now students, let us discuss about the course of a river in the hills. Rivers flow through hills and mountains at a great speed. Over the years, the rivers break the rocks on the mountainside. Huge stones break down and form soil while traveling with the water to the plains. Do you know what forms when a river falls over steep slopes in the hills? Well. When a river falls over steep slopes in the hills, it forms waterfalls. A river continues to go grow bigger further in its course as other rivers join it. These other rivers are known as tributaries. Some tributaries join the river in the hills while some join it later when the river reaches the plains. Now students, let us discuss about the course of river in the plains. The river now flows down the plains slowly as the plains are flat. In the plains, the river is heavy with the mud and sand that it has carried on its journey down the mountains and through the plains. At this point, as same meanders are formed as a result of the erosion and deposition work of the rivers. The fine soil brought down the mountains by a river is called silt. During monsoons, water in a river fills beyond its capacity and it overflows its banks causing floods. When the water dries up, the silt is left behind. Silt makes the land fertile which is good for growing crops. Now students, let us discuss about the mouth of a river. The place where a river ends its journey is called the mouth of a river. From here, the river flows into a lake, sea or ocean. Some rivers carry a lot of silt up to their mouths. The mud makes it hard for the river to flow in one stream. So it breaks into many small rivers to reach the sea or ocean. In its old stays with almost no gradient, the river flows very slowly. Over the years, silt gets deposited between the smaller rivers in the mouth of a river. This forms a triangular shape known as a delta. Some rivers do not form a delta and flow into the sea in a continuous stream. The mouth of such a river is called an estuary. The river estuary is where fresh river water meets salty seawater. 
River Ganga is a snow-fed river. River Godavari is a rain-fed river. The highest waterfalls in India are the Jog Falls in Karnataka. The Ganga and the Brahmaputra rivers form the largest delta in the world called the Sundarbans. Well children, I hope you understood whatever topics we have discussed in this video. Thank you so much.